All right. <laughs> uh, we're just missing Greg. Greg. Paging Greg. Voice Greg. All right. Um, so I, I'm going to go ahead and start. Greg, come on down. Yeah. Uh, reopen the uh, August 25th meeting of the Town Charter Commission. We're going to go with a section. 5.5 City Administrator, and I will read the very first sentence, uh, which I think we need to approve, and then we'll go to A and go through the list. Okay, so uh, there shall be a City Administrator appointed by a majority vote of the Board of Aldermen from a select list of qualified applicants. Board discussion. Okay, Mary Jane. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Did you have a second? Any discussion on that? That was an easy move. Greg always did with us the city administrator the very first line. Which I'm sure you're familiar with. Excited. All right, we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. We'll take a vote. Jan Henderson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Lisa Henderson. Yes. Michael McDonald. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jim Asia. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Sandra Harbaugh. Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker. Yes. All right. We'll move on to 5.5A eligibility. And uh, the city administrator shall be appointed on the basis of their administrative qualifications. The city administrator shall reside in the city or shall have established permanent residency in the city within six months of their appointment and must maintain primary residency within the city during the entirety of their appointment. The city administrator shall possess all qualifications as provided by this charter or by ordinance. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Strike the word administrator. We're going to appoint them based on their qualifications. Administrative qualifications lead out, lead out leadership and all those other things. Uh, Do you think you should go back and admit um, 5.3a for clerical qualifications in that case? the other one. All right. All right. So I'm okay, I'm okay with striking that administrative. I agree with that. Then. Any other discussion? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. Any? What are we striking now? On the very first line where it says shall be appointed on the basis of their administrative qualification and pointed out that administrative is very limiting. And so, you would like to strike out the administrator, correct? Yes. Do we uh, need a second on oh, I didn't move it, I just asked. We were just still having more discussion. If he reads it again without it, then I'll move it. Jim? I think that we either should allow the board to waive the residency requirement. We should add that if they don't sell the house in the six months, the city shall purchase that that house. You can move. A lot of company, a lot of companies do that. Yeah, if you when they when, when you uh, move an employee, and you, you have a requirement like that. You you purchase the house. So I'm saying that. What I really believe we should do is if the Board of Alderman chooses, they can waive the requirement to reside in the city. Mr. Chair. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I think 
that's ludicrous. Um, when someone runs for this position, they know what the requirements are, and we'll have to deal with it. Okay. I don't know which one had their hand up first. Um, you read it as shall establish a permanent, and we have primary on here. Or is it? Which is I must have misspoke there. I'm sorry. It should be primary. Okay. Yes, Virgin. Well, this is how I feel in a perfect world. Now, mind you, I said in a perfect world, I think every teacher, every administrator at the school, every fireman, every policeman, anybody that works for the city, ought to live within the city limits. But again, I said in a perfect world. We're not in a perfect world. Everybody has a choice of where they want to live, and I don't think we should take that choice away from them. I know there's a lot of you that disagree with me, but I'll tell you what. If I was a young professional, and the stipulation was you have to live within the city of Raytown, I'd turn it down. And the main reason being, when we moved out of here back in 1972, the schools were top notch. Your kids could get an excellent education out here. They're not rated that way now. And I think it's, fa I think it's unfair to saddle somebody with, okay, you want the job, you're more than qualified, but you're gonna have to move here. I think it's unfair, and I oppose it. Mr. Chairman. Okay, did you want to hold on one second? Greg, and then we'll go to this side. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, if you want to go to a perfect world, go to Independence. They have the same requirement, and it's not a problem there. They have in Kansas City, it's not a problem there. Back at the check, almost every city has this requirement, and it works there. If you remember the Independent School Board administration, you have to live within the Independent School District. It is not overly arbitrary. It is what is expected, and they know when they when they when they move into that position. I have a young neighbor. Uh, I have a neighbor whose daughter went to work for the school district of Independence, and she is she moved specifically to Independence for her position. She wanted to. As far as the schools, Independence had some of the worst schools in the world over on their west side. They took them away from the Kansas City School District, brought them into the Independence School District, and now all of a sudden. Their grade point average is shot up to the roof. Ours has it. Where? I said ours has it. I know ours has it, and there's probably a problem with the way it's being administered, but we're not addressing that. We should not be treating our city administrator any different than they are anywhere else. And everywhere else, they're required to live within the city. Just about. I mean, I'm sure you can find some exceptions, but they're going to be rare. Yes. Yes. Um, I've done a little bit of research on this um, topic in general. And of the charter cities in Missouri, I, I have yet to find one that doesn't have a stipulation on residency for the city administrator. Now, being said, you know, I, I, I know some folks are under impression that everyone under city staff should, should, should have that, you know, residency requirement. I, I don't happen to share that. But I, I do believe that for the city administrator, you were the, you were the head of, uh, of the city offices, the head of all the departments. Uh, with that type of position and the monetary contribution of such, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask that they live within, within our city. Like I said, and I don't view it as that controversial. I, like I said, I've done my research on this for the past few months. I've looked at almost every charter, and mm -hmm. I've seen the city administrator within the charter is required to live within the city limits of those particular cities. Now, I see different stipulations on, like, you know, finance director and all these other ones where they're required to live, but they can't be waived by the board. I've seen those for other positions, but for the city administrator and the other charters I've seen um, in Missouri, I, I've seen residency requirements. So, again, I, I don't view that as um, this controversial. If you All right, anybody else on this side? Mark? Uh, Greg and uh, Jason pretty well hit the nail on the head. Uh, it's, I mean, I view it as this. That if you have a city administrator, Ted's brought up the word leadership, leader, 
you know, you should be in town, you should be meeting people, spending your money here, et cetera, et cetera. If I was a CEO of uh, GM, GM and I drive a Ford to work, that kind of looks a little different, you know. They don't, they don't quite go for that. So, you know, at least that's my opinion. Anyway. And, uh, I appreciate the way Greg and Jason explained uh, the way they think. All right. Number one, we're not Raytown, we're not Kansas City, we're not any other town, we're Raytown. And I think if we make that requirement, we're going to be cutting down our um, our candidates, so to speak, if, if Mahesh should leave, and we make the stipulation, I think we're going to be cutting down our field of candidates tremendously. I think we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Sandy? Personally, I feel that they should live in the city. I will tell you what some, when I uh, put my phone number in the paper, I had several calls. One of them was very adamant about it should be the person who can do the job best, whether they live in the city or not. I told her I'd put that out here, and you guys can chew on that for a while. Okay, Susan. I think it's a, a point of, a reasonable point of pride of the uh, future of the city, that we have a city administrator who is invested, personally invested, in Raytown's future direction, and demonstrates that by actually living in and participating, as well as participating in the, the uh, direction of the city. Thank you, Susan. I'm going to add one more thing. Uh, I remember when uh, Rick McHerter became fire chief, uh, and he actually lived, I think, in Blue Springs. But his requirement in order to become fire chief in Raytown was that he had to move to Raytown. Because I, I mean, I decided to build this house because he just specifically for that Raytown, uh, for that uh, requirement. And uh, I mean, if we I don't know if it's still required of the fire chief. I think it is, uh, but I mean, if it's required for the fire chief, and we've got a good, we've got an excellent fire chief again. Uh, I think chief of police is the same way, and uh, so I mean, my thoughts are uh, when you have this requirement in here, you're going to get people that uh, look at uh, the possibility of the position more than. Uh, location of where it is and uh, I know when I moved to Raytown and people asked me why and, and I told them very specifically why I moved here um, but uh, uh, I, I mean I, I'm actually for residency requirements so Jason and I, I'd like to say that you know I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm happy with the situation we have in terms of you know, the city administration straight we have, you know, I, um, my, my view on this is, is not any reflection on his leadership at all. I think it's just what I think it should be at the cornerstone of this community. I really do. I've had a lot of folks talking about this. It's something that I believe in. Um, when I first found out a few years ago that wasn't the case, I was frustrated with it personally just because it's also a pride issue for me. Uh, being said, and I, this is just a point of consideration to throw out there, um, maybe this type of, I think this board will decide, but maybe this type of question uh, should be left up to the voters on this, on this, uh, on this charter and that have it as a pull-out question possibly. So that could be something maybe to consider, or I mean, you know, I'll go with the direction of the board on that, but that, that is something just to throw out there to, to, to think about. Thank you. My personal thoughts on that, I would prefer not to have a lot of questions, but, uh, any other, any other comments from the yeah, MI? Mr. Chair, I'll start. Go to Jim. Um, first of all, I don't think anybody loves the city more than I do. I've educated the children I've served on this board. I've been a resident here for 47 years. I'm going to be buried in this city. It's the only cemetery we actually have in this, which is my outlet. Um, and ideally, yes, I agree that. I really would want everybody 
to reside in the city. But what I really want the most is I want a city government that's professionally run with the very best it can. And when we get ready to hire people, or and I've, I've been in many closed sessions where we hire them, and uh, I've watched many good employees come and go. And actually, what we've really seen in the last 10 years is this has been kind of a, a melting pot, or, or maybe that's not a good word, but it's been a place where a lot of young people come to move up. Primarily because you can compare us to all the other cities. If you do, then you should write in there also that we will pay the same as all the other cities do. The truth is, we don't pay. We're never in the middle. We, if we do, we won't stay there very long. And and the amount of money uh, that that it takes to keep someone here is, is a lot, and it's going up. Not just for city administrators, but even for police. Even the police department has come to us and said, we are losing officers because we are so low. The last city administrator that was hired, that was required to live here, was chosen by a select few people on the board and fired shortly after he got here because the guy did not perform well. And, I, and, and during that time, we had many devastating things, setbacks that happened in the city. I don't think I Man, I would hate to think that anyone in this charge may would say, that's okay, you live here. As long as you live here, we don't care how you perform. As opposed, as opposed to hiring the top professionals. Now, the, the question is, is this. Do we pay enough to hire anyone or someone that's, you know, obviously other cities are going to go out after to come here? That we, we have to compete. I might also add, compare independence, that's great. But an independent, you can live in this and it's good at Blue Springs. You can't live in Ray County and go to Blue Springs. You can't live in Ray County and go to anywhere else but Ray County. You can live in, in Lee Summit and go to Blue Springs. Because their school districts cross city lines. And they also they are also not cities that are that are stuck within circumscribed bounds. We have to work with growth. You can buy new houses. We don't have this neighborhood to rate down. So when you look at and even the number of applicants, the number of applicants that we're getting for almost any job here, and, and I don't know about the police department, but I think they're having a little bit of difficulty too. I remember, I think Chief Lynn's saying that, because they go for the top quality. They don't go after just any place. They want the best. And that's the same thing that I think you want that's going to serve the city. I think it's a very big issue. So I think at the very least it should be pulled out. But I, I think it would be a major issue that would might determine whether this charter would either pass or fail. I do believe that. Mr. Chairman, okay. yes, it, this isn't just any job. This is the city administrator. And as for pay, I believe there's going to be a lot of freaking applicants that want to get paid over 140 grand a year. They'll come to this town looking for that salary. We're not just hiring somebody to mow the grass or anything. This is the cornerstone, as Jason Green explained, of, of this town. If you don't want to live here, then go get a job somewhere else. But I guarantee you, and I know some public people, They'll come here for $140,000 a year and all the perks. They'll move here, and there's a lot of nice places to live here, Jim. More than you may, than you describe. I live in a, in a so, you know, kind of a eh, so so neighborhood, but there's some nice places here. You know, it's a nice town. If you don't want to work here and live here as a city administrator, go to Independence and see if you can get hired. Go to Kansas City, go to Blue Springs. Go to Iola, Kansas. You know, to me, live here. You're paid well. You want that position? Live here. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <clears throat> Give me here. But some, some of these arguments have to be thrown out. Comparing the city administrator to first responders, especially line officers, and whatnot, is flawed on its face because. 
we do have, we do require that people have to be able to get to work within a certain time. There's a difference between hiring uh, 60 police officers and, and requiring that they be in 10 square miles to hire them on the city administrator. Uh, that's, there's a big difference there. I can see why it, it, it is a smaller city and I can see that, that the size of the city might make a difference, but the comparison to other cities is something that happens in this room on a regular basis and is almost always a flawed argument because of the difference between the cities. That doesn't make it wrong, however. Um, for the record, having, having tossed all this out here, I personally believe that the, the city administrator all ought to live in the city. We've only had three, by the way, and the first two chose to move here because they felt that it was part of the job. Um, no, they were, they were required. Right. They were required. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but I think that's okay when you're talking about one position. I also think it's okay for us to set those rules and decide one way or the other. And, and I think that a number of us have probably come here because we've already heard what the people that, at least the people that we asked for support for, said. I, I think it's okay to put it in the charter. I think, I think though, that that argument about first responders and compare it to other cities is compare it to other cities for this is as flawed as it has been for the other things that it's been. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to get it with my person, and then we'll go to the side. Now, I also believe that the city administrator should have to live here. It is a leadership position, uh, as Jim was talking about neighborhoods. Uh, if you have somebody that lives here, they're going to be more interested in what goes on here. It's not just a job, they need to have some ownership in living here. They are the leader of the city, administrative leader of the city, and for the money they pay them, for their knowledge, they should have to be here, where they can see what goes on day in and day out, buy the groceries here, buy their gas here, and know what's going on with their neighbors and all the other people in the city. So, I'm Jason. I don't think every uh, head of every department needs to live here. That's that's not voted in. Uh, but I do believe the city administrator definitely needs to live here. All right, Greg. Uh, I was just going to. Oh, I was just going to point out we have four city administrators. Um, County of London currently they have three previous all moved to the city of Ray County where they lived previous and one moved from the summit. One moved from Colorado, uh, another one moved from the county up in northern Michigan is where it came from. And the point is that that was the rules that they were hired under, they accepted it, and I don't I'm not gonna sit here and judge who did a good job or who did a bad job, but we've had some good Good leadership here from those who did move here to the city. And I know we went through Kurt Wentz is one I can think of in particular. We didn't always agree. However, I would say when we had emergencies, Kurt was on hand, he was here immediately because he only lived a couple miles away. It's important. Mary Jane? I believe that it is now required of the city administrator to live within the city. Mahesh was given, um, what do you want to call it, an exemption or whatever. Uh, by the board, but it is written in there that the city administrator does need to live within the city limits. But he was given an exemption by the board, so I don't know that you know. Wasn't that in 1997? Uh, uh, he was given two or three exemptions, right? And yeah, this contract is what's up here. And this was actually a promise he'd move here. Start right. up. All right. So 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 perhaps then we should include the language that states that it's. Without exception. Okay. I, uh, I think we're pretty much saying that. <laughs> but okay. All right. One more comment. Well, two more on this end. We're going to call for a vote because I think we got some consistency. Go ahead, Sandy. I have a problem with Flint making this pull out. Um, we had, and I can't remember how many on the last charter, but it was part of the reason that 
It did pass. It's very confusing to some people. Some people walk out to it fine, and other people didn't understand why it was that way. So. All right, Jim, and I agree with that. I would just share with you that there are a lot of finance directors, people in public works that make a lot more than our city administrator does. You see that the, we even have assistant administrators and assistant finance directors that are making more than we're paying ours. So, and in fact, if we do this, we're going to see our city administrator salary leave way up in order to compete to get one day. That's what's really going to happen. Because it's what's happening in the job market today. I think I'm going to change professions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jason, one last comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, mean, I, mean, I just want to ask, I mentioned the plot just as a suggestion. Not that I'm really 100% behind that or not. But I just, you know, I just want the board to consider that. All right. I think, uh, uh, I'm going to take a motion to uh, approve it with the word striking of administrative before qualifications. Okay. And Jason seconds. And we'll vote on it this way. And if it doesn't get approved, we'll try to address it another way. Any other discussion before we take the vote? One last comment. Please call roll. Michael McDonough. Yes. Can she reread that? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, I can. Five point five A. Eligibility. The city administrator shall be appointed on the basis of their qualifications. The city administrator shall reside in the city or shall establish primary residency in the city within six months of their employment or appointment rather, and must maintain primary residency within the city during the entirety of their appointment. The city administrator shall possess other qualifications as provided by this charter or by ordinance. Now make a motion. Second. Michael McDonough. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yeah. Jason Green. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Janasia. No. Charlotte Nelson. No. Greg Walters. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. No. And just to clarify, Jim was in there as well. Jim was in there. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Sandy, did you pass or did you? Did you pass? She voted yes. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Yes. okay. All right. So the motion does pass at a vote of 10 to 2. We'll move on to section B. I'll read the first part and then we will go through powers and duties. Uh, section B, powers and duties. The city administrator shall be responsible to the Board of Aldermen for the management of all city affairs placed in the city administrator's charge or under this charter. The city administrator shall have the following powers and duties. one of the responsibilities or duties individually. So right now we're all just saying this, that uh, they shall have these following powers or duties. Any discussion to this? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? You struck a word, you said charge, did you strike the word buyout that? What are you ready? Second line, the city administrator is charged by or under this charter. We also need to put in your board of aldermen to keep it consistent. We did. We did. We did. Uh, who seconded it? Uh, Mike. Mike seconded Yeah, Mike seconded it. Lisa, can you put in the information chance? B, powers of duties. 
The city administrator shall be responsible to the Board of Aldermen for the management of all city affairs placed in the city administrator's charge by or under this charter. The city administrator shall have the following powers and duties. Seeing no further discussion, we'll take a vote. Jim Nisha. Yes. Janet Everson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Ted Bowen. Yes. Ray J. Beth Oscar. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Lisa Everson. Yes. Motion passes uh, 12 to 0. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the first item is coordinate and generally supervise the operation of all departments, both line and staff, except as otherwise specified by this charter, by ordinance, or by state. Oh, state law, I'm sorry. Any discussion on this one? It's pretty much included in almost every one that I've read. Lisa Emerson, yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Steve Gutman. Yes. Ray Jane Nabuskirk. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Jim Asian. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Um, Janet Emerson. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Susan Dolan. If I yes. Just, thank you, sorry. If I could just read it to make sure that yes. it's yeah, happening, sorry. Uh, 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 one, uh, one. Coordinate and generally supervise the operation of all departments, both line and staff, except as otherwise specified by this charter by ordinance or by state law. Mm -hmm. We'll go on to number two. Uh, make recommendations of appointments and removal of department heads and division supervisors under their direct under their direction and supervision for the approval of the Board of Aldermen. Seconded as it was originally read, and Ted made 
A motion. A motion. A motion to, to remove. eliminate the words and division supervisors from the motion as it's made.
Well, and as, as long as it says uh, that they have to abide, I mean, in one, we're saying that they have to uh, abide as things specified by this charter, by ordinance, or by state law. So if we're already saying by this ordinance, and we have it in the ordinance under the personnel uh, code or under the administrative code, then, then it should be covered. Correct? That's my point, unless yeah. you say and division supervisor. So, Michael, you had something that you wanted to no, thank You're you. good. Okay, so. Well, that brings us back to the amendment. I'm not sure. Because I agree, Greg, with the, with the idea that the, the, the flap with the, that particular supervisor that had, in effect, become a department. All right. I don't know the answer, right? All right, Jim. Well, trying to follow the conversation here. Um, we're talking about the city administrator's responsibility. That's correct. And uh, the, uh, I think what Ted's saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ted, that it's not just division supervisor, but um, should this be under the supervision of the board of all, do they have to make that final decision? Is that what you're? Yes, it's really about the board. Yes, for any board participation, not to make what he does. Right. It's the board participation I'm concerned about for anything other than a department head. Right. And that's, right. That's what I'm. But but Greg's point is that the department head is not defined. It's not defined here. It's not defined in the plan. And the only thing that we would be relying on by taking those words out is that that board that has to deal with this recognizes that they have to create something called a department head that reports only to the city administrator. I, I would think of, in order to comment what you want, you would just take out the approval of the Board of all. Would you be okay with the board not approving a department head being terminated? I, I think now to do that, I'm pretty sure that that we, he can remove the department head. We've done that at least once that I know of without the board approval. So I would be okay if he can hire him, I can't fire Well, I, I think though, you know, we say that he can't, he has to, a department head, he has to get approval from the board of all. Well, they, yeah, they have to be approved by resolution, but. Right, so I mean, you almost have to disapprove. Yeah, I've never said that. Well, I don't see why he had to have the approval of the bottom. Lisa? Is this something that we should specify maybe in 5.1 or 5.2 with the administration of personnel systems? Where we didn't define the departments, but um, we need to define what a department it is, perhaps. Maybe we can work on that and come back to it. Okay. Greg, you're right. You know something? You got it wrong. Well, I was just going to say we could say removal of departments gets designated in the city's uh, charge. I, I don't know. We used to have one, uh, you know, a, a structure to show, you know, who was in charge where. When, when I was on board, I don't know if they still do that or not. A management chart, you know, and, and it, it identified, you know, the different departments and who was in charge. My concern goes a little bit further because now we have some departments that are essentially one person. And I don't know if you could count them as a division supervisor or just say they're supervising themselves, but they have a, a purpose that is unique to the city that nobody else does. Uh, does the board, Mr. Mr. Cole's a good example. Does the board approve that? Those appointments? That appointment. We used to approve the, 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 the chart of uh, the organization of the city. But, and that's part of the budget process, right? Well, not only that, Typically. but it's also, we also approve the chart of the organization of the city as to how it functions. Independent of the budget process, the planning process? Yeah. Pretty much. If the board, if the board is expected to approve the hiring of a particular individual, would they, would they not have a say determining whether or not determination is yeah, I think that's where the big point was. Yeah. 
know, that was my point. So, I mean, I'm okay with just taking out and division supervisors. I mean, to get back to it, and because yeah, I think the board could be overburdened with too much, you know, management of this this portion of it. So. And if you have a division supervisor that stands by himself, just make him a department head and do what you want. <laughs> but, uh, so, we have a motion then by Ted or yes, an amendment to the motion to strike out the words and division supervisors. So, Lisa, go ahead. We need a second. We will need a second. Uh, Ted's amendment says to make recommendations, appointments, and removal of department heads under their direction and supervision for the approval of the Board of Aldermen. Is that correct? Yes, as long as there is a bill to show possession. Right. Why is it? T H E I R. Yeah. Is it not? Yes, it is. Oh! He's meant to All right, so I should take a vote. So we have a motion and a second. Now, this is a motion and a second to strike the words out of this, and then we'll have to actually vote it in, correct? That's correct. Right, this is a motion to strike and the quote, quote, and division supervisors. All right. Susan Dolan. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mary Jane and Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. And then we go back to the main motion as motion by Jim and seconded by Jason. Um, as amended. As amended. So it's, so it's the same, same thing. Susan Dolan. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Asher. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Long. Yes. All right. I have three. Power to appoint and remove all other subordinate employees of the city who are subject to their possession. Direction and supervision. Motion to approve. Thank you. some discussion for a second. She needs discussion so that she has time to get it. Okay. Ted. Yes. Motion to get Jim seconded. We'll give her a second. He's brought up. Any other board discussion is that might be. So item three, I'm going to read it for you. Power to appoint and remove all other subordinate employees of the city who are subject to their direction and supervision. Take a vote. Mary Jane Van Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Greg Walters. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Jim Asian. Yes. Motion carries 12 0. Item 4 attend all Board of Aldermen meetings and shall be able to take part in discussion if necessary but shall not vote. We've got four discussion. Motion to accept. Any other discussion? Yes, Sandy. You're saying all all department heads? No. No, we're on the oh, same mystery. I'm sorry. I got lost there for a minute. If no other further discussion, I'll read it. 
attend all Board of Aldermen meetings and shall be able to take part in discussion if necessary, but shall not vote. Michael Minton? Yes. Mary Jane Papasco? Yes. Jenny Joe? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Sandra Harwell? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Tim Bell? Yes. Item number five, prepare and submit a recommended annual budget and five-year capital improvement program to the Board of Aldermen to achieve the goals of the city. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, what is the five-year capital improvement program? It's just a forecasting, I guess, uh, of the things that uh, we're asking them to look forward into the things that they would anticipate need to be done within the city so that money can be uh, is that currently being done? I think so. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All right, you ready to read? Five. Prepare and submit a recommended annual budget and five-year capital improvement program to the Board of Aldermen to achieve the goals of the city. Greg Walters. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, mean, I, I just, my, my question about that is, I think it's a great idea, and I, I'm born to see a, a five-year capital improvement program. But do that every year on questions. I would like to question that. For example, uh, it's almost impossible for us to put any money towards things like street lights, sidewalks, storm sewers, and those are the areas that are most needed. And that's what people ask. Me. We hear that most often. Just because our budget isn't such. And what we're seeing in the last five years is that salaries are growing faster and a faster rate than what our income is. So their income has been relatively stable. Uh, even when we have a few new business comes, we have to increase them. So uh, our overall budget really has to increase. Um, so I, I just question why would we be doing this every year for the, forever? There's not really a budget to do that. Well, I mean, to me, it's something that gets addressed every year. Some things might fall off, some things might get added. I mean, to me, it's like a construction schedule. I mean, I put together a nine-month construction schedule for a project, but I also put together a three-week schedule so that I know exactly what has to happen and things do change, you know, based on the weather conditions and things like that. So I'm thinking that, you know, my thoughts on the five-year capital campaign is, you know, our capital improvement program is that we at least try to identify the areas that we'd like to address and maybe at some point in time we can begin to do that but you know in reality that might change every year and I think it needs to be addressed every year. And, and, I, and I agree, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with the, with the five year plan. Uh, maybe I should say I agree with the five year capital improvement plan but the, but the five year economic plan overall is this is what I asked for when I was finance director. I thought we needed a five-year plan economically with finances to see how we were going, a long-range term. Um, there were times when that we executed certain goals that if we paid them all off, we would be bankrupt. So they had all the advantages of the goals. Uh, that's why I felt that the five-year plan was important. Uh, but we're saying that we're going to contribute an X number of dollars for a significant amount of I think you're getting taxpayers' books up. When you come up with a plan that they were going to have some these street lights, sidewalks, and that money is never going to be there. And, and significant amount of money to make a little difference. I'll just give you one example. Storm Stroke is a really worse problem. They did, a, they did a study that showed that if we put X number of dollars in the next 99 years, Actually, what I introduced a quarter cent sales tax, specifically uh, 
uh, earmark for storm water. And we knew it. <coughs> in 99 years that we never solve our problem. That's how many problems we have. So oftentimes we get we get calls from my constituents to say, I've got this problem. They just have to come out and say, we have no money earmarked for storm water at all. It's because it's never going to be in the budget. Uh, and they that, but it's true. And the same way with, with street lights. That's been a standing argument, but the fact is, every time you put one up, you guys get to go forever. Wasn't there a, a sewer bond that went out in, uh, when was it, Jimmy? I think you were around on that one. Yep. Was it 205? It was the bond. That was a bond. It was a general obligation bond, I believe. That bond was issued, uh, the city borough, let's see, that was through Jeffries and Company out of Wall Street. Uh, the interest rate on that sewer bond, let's see, let me, let me go, let me step back a little bit. I'm just going to fill you in on, on what I've learned about that sewer bond, A and B. Uh, that bond was for two and a quarter million dollars. The interest on that bond was 1.4 million. So the city got to use, I don't know, not very much money to fix the street. So whoever, whoever negotiated that bond didn't do a very good job. Uh, because most of the funds were used up on the interest side, payback, and that's where debt accumulates. That's why we can't get anything done because debt just keeps on rolling over. So, you know, I agree with you. We need some work done on the cities and the streets. I just want to clarify something. Sewers and stormwater are not the same. We had many, many, many clay pipes that were collapsing that we absolutely had to address. We didn't have a choice. Uh, that's why we were poor. We had we had to get them fixed. Right. So that's why we ended up with not such a good deal. Uh, well, that's not. I don't know. Hey, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, I've got other people that want to talk. Um, no, I, I think I kind of this is kind of our having kind of a sidebar conversation here a little minute ago. But first off, um, a lot of this forecast. I think this is really a forecast. Is what maybe I think some people are thinking it's like a, a budget, if you will, and that, that's not the intent at all. Uh, it looks like a forecast. I mean, we, we get this from public works already. I mean, it's not like, you know, that you have to go by this five-year plan if you want. I think it's it, the concept, that you, I mean, if we need to reward it, that's fine. But the concept to me states that, you know, here's the goals for capital funds in the city the next five years. So, again, I have no issue with that. And I wanted to kind of bring this back into what this is about um, instead of talking about Stormwater and stuff, but anyway. I, I want to finish this one. Uh, any other discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. The requirement here is to try to get a, a capital plan. Um, and, and some of the points have been discussed here about what, uh, about the way those things are handled. The point, I think, when you, when you do a budget, one of the things we've learned doing budgets here in the city is that you don't do it year by year. You have to do that in order to get business done, but only as it relates to a longer term plan. If you can't say where you're going with this year's budget further down the line, then perhaps that budget is just playing that just got to can't get through one year. The budgeting process is supposed to be about saying for the future. If you don't have the money and you can't deal with it, improve or increasing some service or, or doing some work and you have to have some plan for addressing what are you going to do about it and, and so the plan is not so much a matter of how much money we're going to throw at it but where we're going to find money how we're going to prioritize what's important and that's the basis upon which we vote that's what people set up here right and that's a program yes and i think the requirement to have that program so that people can see that it's, it's, it's legitimate all right, I think we've had enough discussion on this. I'd like to, um, is there a motion now? Yep, yeah. Craig Walters. Yes. Senator Arbo. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Ted Feldman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Jim Asher. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. John Moore. Yes. Mary Jane Lembesker. Yes. Jim Anderson. Yes. Lisa Anderson, yes. Motion passes on item five. We will continue with item six at our next meeting. If there's no other opposition, we'll be adjourned.